Feeling better when rolling low key. Feeling better when rolling low key. Feeling like too many people know me. Like too many people know me. Know me. I ain't felt like this shit since like 03. I ain't felt like this before. I ain't felt like this before. And I need you, baby, to hold me. I'ma keep it low, keep it cold. What's going on? We'll come back to the channel. Um, be reacting to 50. The 50 greatest NBA players of all time. Really hope this shit don't like make me mad. You know what I'm saying? And I be nothing dumb on here. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, hopefully at some point it's accurate. You know what I'm saying? Let's see. Yeah, let's just cut the cat. Y'all got nothing better to do. It's my top 50 all time list. Let's go ahead and get. Alright, let me, let me slow things down. Man. So today we're going to be covering my top 50 all-time list as of late March 2020. I understand that there will be a lot of comments about very minute details about this list, but I do want you guys to keep in mind that I did incorporate a tier list as well, along with my ranking. There are six tiers total, and each tier doesn't really have a set criteria to it, like this tier is for people who have a case for the GOAT, this tier is for players who have longevity but no rings, there's nothing really like that, but to make it simple, each tier just accompanies a club of players that I believe, for the most part, emphasis on, for the most part, people can rearrange in whichever way they want, and I won't be overly upset. But with that being said, I don't want to spend too much time on the intro. Y'all know what a top 50 all-time list is. Y'all know what a tier list is. So let's go ahead and start the madness with spots 50 through 41. At number 50, we have Dwight Howard, 49, Ray Allen, 48, Clay Thompson, 47, huh. Yanks, to Kumpo, 46 Paul. Why is the way Howard number 50? Why is he in the top 50? You know, I know they're not ranking him by what he did in 09 with the Magic, which was good, but you know, I don't see him as a top 50 center of all time. Paul Pierce, 45 Patrick Ewing, 44 Dave Cowens, 43 Kevin McHale, 40 Sue oh. Ron Frazier, and at 41 to close off this part of the list, we have Bob Cousy. Now just in general, the last five of the top 50 list is the part of the list that has the most leeway. I do believe that there are more players that belong in this tier than just the 10 players I included, like, you know, the Vince Carters, the Tracy McGrady's, the Ben Wallace's, the Gary Payton's, so on and so forth, just to name a couple. But to highlight some of the aspects of this tier that people might ask in the comment section. Number one, Giannis. Why is Giannis Antetokounmpo already in the top 50 all the time? Well, purely from a talent perspective, Giannis is already a specimen we've never seen before. A 6 foot 11 forward that can legitimately guard all five positions. He's already one of the best defenders we've ever seen. He's an extremely effective scorer as well. And peak for peak, right now, there are not a lot of players that are better than Giannis. And assuming that he would have gotten MVP this year, he would be one of the handful of players in history to have back-to-back -back MVPs on their resume. And there was also a distance of good chance that he would have won Defensive Player of the Year this year in the same season that he would have won MVP, which only two players in history have done. Again, despite not having the longevity or a championship to his name, Giannis has already done stuff in his career that not many have done. But again, like I said in the beginning, because it is a tier and the last five of the top 50 does have a lot of leeway, I would not be mad if you said that Gary Payton or Ben Wallace should be in there before Giannis. I see that argument. Another question some of you guys might be asking is Clay Thompson. Why is Clay Thompson over Ray Allen? While Ray does have longevity, Clay already has the same amount of all NBA selections and one more ring than Ray Allen, all while being more integral to his team in those championship contention years than Ray Allen was to the 2008 Celtics and the 2013 Heat, at least in my opinion. But again, keep in mind, they are in the same tier, and if someone were to say Ray Allen over Clay, again, I would see that argument, and I respect it. I also included some old school players like Bob Cousy and Walt Frazier, who had really good careers for their times, and were champions, and were great pioneers of the game, however, weren't extremely dominant and transcendent enough talent-wise to be higher on this list. Now let's move on to the next 10. At number 40, we have Willis Reed, 39 John Stockton, 38 Allen Iverson, 37 Russell West. 36 Steve Nash, 35 Jason Kidd, 34 Scotty Pippen, 
33 Clyde Drexler, 32 John Havlicek, and at 31 we have Elvin Hayes. Now aside from Willis Street at 40, this is where all... So why is... <clears throat> why is Evan Iverson 38? Why is he 38? He should definitely be higher. I know he probably based this on, you know what I'm saying, I guess him not having a ring or whatever. But Allen Iverson should be higher. You know, he came, when, when Allen came in, it, it was like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> He should be high. I feel like I feel like Alan Iverson should be high. Right? Yeah. All of tier five life. Again, there's no set criteria for each tier. But I do see players that were very successful second options like Scotty Pippen and John Havlicek on this part of the list, or players that were great regular season performers but weren't the best in the playoffs like Russell Westbrook and Alan Iverson. On this team. I also see a decent amount of players here that just couldn't be the best player on a championship team, but still had a great career as a first option and did contribute to a championship team. At some point in their career, like Clyde Drexler and Jason Kidd, this is the part of the list where longevity does start to matter, and your success as a first option begins to matter as well. Now, there is one elephant in the room that I want to address, and that would have to be John Stockton. Why is John Stockton only at 39? When you look at the numbers he put up in his career, and the longevity that he had, and his efficiency, how is he not higher up on this list? Well, one, I, I, I just don't think John Stockton was as dominant as his numbers make him seem, and I would say out of every Everyone in this team, he is probably the worst first option. Now by first option, I don't exclusively mean as a scorer. What I mean is, if you were to build around John Stockton and have John Stockton as your bona fide best player, you would find it extremely hard to build a championship contender around him because of the fact that he's not a great scorer, not an all-time great defender like Kawhi or Gary Payton. When you have the ball to utilize John Stockton as effectively as possible, you would need a player greater than him, like Carmelo. Kareem or something like that to best utilize him. while the players above him have proven to be truly successful first options in their career and I, I, I just can't say that for John Stockton. You combine that with no rings in his career, that would be my reasoning for putting Stockton this low. Now let's move on to the top 30 starting with Elgin Baylor at number 30, Rick Barry at number 29, Chris Paul at 28, James Harden at 27, Isaiah Thomas at 26, Bob Pettit at 25, Kevin Garnett at 24, Charles Barkley at 23, Carmelo at 22, and David Robinson at 21. Now, the 31 to 50 slots for the I most part, people won't yeah, really make uh, you know, unless you're on YouTube like me. People are just looking for certain names to be included, but the top 30 is where the no picking really does start. Also, this is where <laughs> tier 4 begins. Now, spoiler, there are more players within Tier 4 in the top 20, so this isn't all of them. This is where the majority of those ringless greats lie. Players that have had tremendous careers, were MVP caliber players, or great first options, could have led some teams to the finals, but just never got a ring in their career like Karl Malone, Charles Barkley, James Harden, and Chris Paul, like those types of players. We also have players who are very close to being in that criteria, but got a ring outside of their prime like David Robinson and Kevin Garnett in this part of the list. Now again, for a couple of things to be addressed. Number one, Bob Pettit. Why is Bob Pettit in here? Because I know a lot of you guys will make fun of him for being a white old school player and laughing at the fact that he's about players like Chris Paul and James Harden, and you'll probably at me on Twitter with the footage from the 40s or 50s. I, I can already see that in my head. Well, just, just put it this way. Bill Russell played from 1950 to 1969. Will Chamberlain, Oscar Robertson, and Jerry West played from around 1960 to 1973, give or take a couple of years. Bob Petty played from 1955 to 1967. So he had a lot of overlap between those four players. Four players who many people have no problem putting in their top 30. He was an 11-time All-Star, an 11-time All-NBA member, a two-time MVP, a one-time champion, also being one of just two players in history to lead their team 
team passed through Russell Celtics and stopped him from being a perfect 13 of 13. The other player being Will Chamberlain and put up career averages of 26 points and 16 rebounds. So please read more about Bob Pettit's career if you can because I believe he is a highly underrated player. Isaiah Thomas's placement as well is a little confusing because he's above Harden and CP3 but below Barkley and Malone. Now I tried to type out the explanation as to why I put him there but it, it, it just took up way too much time so I'll, I'll just chalk that one up as essentially a personal decision of mine because he is a two-time champion that I still don't think had a better career than Barkley and Malone. But again because they are all in the same tier I do see the argument for Isaiah being behind all four of those players and the them as well. So we're getting deeper into the list now let's go ahead and start the top 20 this is where it gets really really interesting i think this is the most interesting part of the list in my own opinion starting off with Kawhi leonard at 20 julius irving at 19 dirk Nowitzki at 18 dwayne wade at 17 oscar robertson at 16 moses malone at 15 jerry west at 14 Will Chamberlain at 13, Kevin Durant at 12, and Stephen Curry at 11. Now, like I said earlier, Tier 4 is continued on this part of the list with Kawhi Leonard, Julius Irving, Dirk Nowitzki, D. Wade, and a couple of other players, and also includes the start of Tier 3. Now, this part of the list, I, I, I can just see it. a lot of you guys will question this part of the list. Probably the biggest one you guys will question is Will Chamberlain at 13. Now, I do want to admit up front that Will Chamberlain was one of the players in this list that I really had trouble ranking. But if you watch this video of mine a couple years back that I made where I took a deep dive into Will's career, I don't think many people realize how much he underperformed in the playoffs. A lot of people attribute his lack of rings simply due to the fact that Bill Russell's Celtics existed and the fact that they were just that good. But if you analyze his career more closely, there were so many, so many times where Will legitimately could have beaten the Celtics if he didn't underperform. His teams also had a higher chance of winning than most people think. A decent amount of those years against Bill Russell and the Celtics, Will Chamberlain was actually favored. And I just believe that he's underperformed so many times in his career that I truly believe that there are 12 players in history who have had better careers than him, including Stephen Curry and Kevin Durant, which understandably, I can see people saying that it's premature to have him this high up on the list. Also, some of you guys might be questioning Kawhi Leonard's placement at 20. Now again, Kawhi was one of those players that I had a lot of trouble ranking because he's accomplished so much in such a little amount of time and doesn't have the longevity of a Karl Malone or Kevin Garnett or even the MVP to his name. But how many players in history can say that they have two defensive player of the years, two championships, and two finals MVPs on two different teams? Not a lot. Again, this is why I made tears because if you told me that you believe that Karl Malone or David Robinson are greater all the time, again, I, I wouldn't be mad at all to see that viewpoint. Again, I'll, I guess I'll just chalk up Kawhi to a personal preference of mine, and that's why I put him at 20. But here we go. My top 10 players of all time. Number 10, Shaquille O'Neal. Number 9, Hakeem Olajuwon. Number 8, Tim Duncan. Number 7, Larry Bird. Number six, Kobe Bryant. Oh, number five, Kobe, number Bill six? Russell. Number four, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Number three, Magic Johnson. Number two, LeBron James. Oh. And number one, Michael Jeffrey Jordan. I think and there it is, my top it. ten players of all time. <laughs> What many of you guys have really been anticipating, but hopefully due to the tier system I placed in my explanation throughout this whole video, you guys realize that the top 10 is not the- Why is Kobe not higher than Magic? Kobe should be higher than Magic. Yeah. It's typical for him to put, um, MJ. At the top of that list, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that's wild. That's wild. LeBron James being number two under Michael Jordan. I would put I would put LeBron over Michael Jordan because I just feel like I just feel like Jordan couldn't contain or even try to stop LeBron. You know, we all know he's a freight train. You know what I'm saying? We all know. LeBron is a freight train, and uh, hopefully, man, when this uh, whole virus thing go away, man, we can just get back to normal. As this is the time, 
this is around the time to really be watching basketball right now, and we can't even watch basketball. I guess I'm in this video right here, man. Um, you know, that was his own personal list or whatever. I think mine would be a little different. But, I mean, I, you know, I can't really argue with, like, the top 10. Because my opinion, those are the top 10 players of all time. Um, but, good video. I'm just a little mad about Kobe. Why Kobe won't be that high. You know what I'm saying? The top 10. Really be what magic is at number three. You know what I'm saying? If you, like, if you enjoyed this video, man, just, uh, and you knew, don't forget to leave, comment, like, and subscribe. You know what I'm saying? And I'll be back to hit y'all with another one.